The most powerful force on earth is a human soul on fire. You have a deep ache in your soul for something more, to come alive, to let your passion pour from you like an endless well. When your passion comes alive, the magnificence buried deep inside of you is unleashed. Gifts and talents you never realized surface as your life unfolds like poetry. You can do hard things. I can show you how. This is Thrive Yoga Fit Transformational Coaching, where I teach you how to heal yourself from the inside out. Hello, welcome back to Thrive Yoga Fit Transformational Coaching. This is Erin. Hey everyone, namaste. I am still in India and I am a little bit more than halfway through my training here. I've been doing 12 hour days, which is uh, a lot. <laughs> I've been doing primary series. For those of you who are familiar with Ashtanga, it's a very vigorous and demanding series. And then I've been doing intermediate series, my source style in the evening. I've been doing yoga therapy, studying yoga sutras, doing pranayama and subtle anatomy exploration, a gross anatomy exploration, and yeah, quite a few other things. So I've been learning so much. I've been absorbing a lot. Um, I've been taking time to process when I can. Um, actually, was it yesterday? Not yesterday, the day before. I uh, after full primary, I laid down for ten minutes. And woke up three hours later, missed my pranayama class. And I just, you know, my body, I'm happy, but my body is exhausted. <laughs> I, I may be modifying the curriculum just a little bit, just because for me, I'm so bendy and open that forward folding is starting to hurt. And, you know, I am proud of how far I've come as far as my ability to advocate for myself when I feel like something isn't exactly right for me. I appreciate the work that I've put in to be able to discern, you know, what's enough, what's too much, and then again, communicate. So yeah, uh, I'm enjoying myself. I am a little tired. That's why this podcast is coming out late because I literally had no time. <laughs> But, um, but I miss you. I love you. Thank you for listening. Today, I wanted to talk about something called Ishta Deveta, which can be translated in different ways, but it's essentially a god, deity, or, you know, image, Morti image that you worship in a sense, or that you embody. And there's a lot of talk about Ishta Devita in Ashtanga, especially people who have taken it beyond the physical and into a very spiritually enriching practice that incorporates the eight limbs of Ashtanga, which side note, by the way, I am um, <laughs> the Yoga Sutras classes. I would debate with the Yoga Sutras teacher because, you know, even though he's, I, I found out later, he's like a PhD and um, he quotes a translation of the Yoga Sutras that is the Swami Satchitananda, which is a good, it's a solid translation. It's kind of like the gold standard, but it's also a little sexist. It's also a little archaic. And so I'd bring up different um, definitions and examples when I would, um, you know, debate with him and to his credit, he opened up the floor and allowed me to express. And it was just really funny because we would like be quoting yoga sutras at each other back and forth. And he wound up starting to call me Guruji. And yeah, so anyways, Ishta Devita. I, this morning in practice, I was doing full primary, very modified because my body was just so sore. I felt like everything's going to break and snap. And again, I'm at the point in my life and career where I advocate for my health, my body. Um, I have nothing to prove, you know, if, if an instructor, and by the way, if my experience of getting assists from my teachers in India has been, it's, they're very aggressive. Um, this is the way that I originally learned Ashtanga. It was like, you know, sort of like masculine as far as the, um, the way that it was demonstrated, the way that it was taught, 
And what got that made me leave Ashtanga actually, which I probably could have dealt with it better, but it is what it is. So, anyways, coming back to Ashtanga, I found a very lovely uh, feminine teacher that I absolutely adore. Her name is Valerie Snyderman, and she's actually teaching at Thrive while I'm away, and she's an Olympic athlete. So, anywho, um, I was doing a very modified practice, and you know, when I take Ashtanga practice, it's like me solving little puzzles within my own body, within my own psyche. And each time I show up to the mat, I have a little theme that I'm working on, right? It might be my breath. It might be, you know, holding from the outside to the inside, um, which I'm, I'm very expansive. So usually hugging in is a better thing for me. Um, you know, uh, Drishti, I'm going to really just focus on my eye gaze today. There's so many different themes that I use almost every practice and that keeps it like a breathing, living, pulsating entity for me. So anyways, I had a thought a few practices ago about how when I was not when I was like really little, but when I was going through like my teenage years, I didn't really get a lot of hugs. Part of it was because I was so angry that, you know, it's probably hard for people to hug me, but also it just, I didn't get a lot from my family. Um, you know, like I didn't see my dad that often at certain times. Part of that was me and my attitude. Another part was he was working all the time and sometimes he would forget to pick us up and, uh, but yeah, anyways, I didn't get a lot of hugs. And so I had this realization that around my ribs have been so tight, so tight And I started like hugging in my rib cage, almost as if somebody were giving me a physical hug and it made me tear up a bit, but it, it sort of enveloped me and my practice and movements and twisting in this container of love. And I have been carrying that with me the last few days. So Today in practice, I'm just, you know, I'm just so sore. I went straight up to the teacher, like as soon as I walked in the room, like boom, like right eye level. And like, it didn't like get in his face, but I was firm. I was like, today I'm modifying. And today, if you give me a cyst, only gentle. And he smiled and nodded his head because, you know, he's a good teacher, but he teaches in the way that he teaches, right? So um, after advocating for myself, I was going through my practices and I, I thought about that hugging you know, hugging myself. And all of a sudden I got this just beautiful image of my mother coming to me. And I felt this warmth go from my spine, from my root, to my swadhisthana, my sacral chakra, like all the way up into my heart and out through my crown. And I just imagined her coming with these beautiful angel wings and just hugging and wrapping around me. And every time I twisted and every time I folded, she was just hugging me with her wings, just showing me how to hug my wings onto my back. Um, I have something called scapular. Uh, let's see if I could say it right. It's like dyskinesias, dyskinesia, something like that. Anyways, basically, it's um, it's a pattern that can be corrected, and I'm working currently to correct it. But basically, the proprioception of your body, like it's hard for you to keep your wings on your back. It's hard for you to keep your scapular, you know, bones on your your back. And so I've been training my muscles and really working to correct this. And my Ishta Devita, which was my mother. Um, came and just like hugged me with her wings and just showed me how to hug in and tuck my wings onto my back. And, you know, the, the sort of message that I got was she was showing me how to do it through visualization and through the sensation in my body. And she was teaching me how to do it for myself. And so I kept hugging my wings onto my body and breathing and my breath became expansive. You know, it's like when you create a little bit of resistance and you breathe against, like you just become much more expansive when you breathe. If you haven't ever tried that, you know, just gently hugging your fascia onto your um, back, like hugging your rib cage and gently and breathe against it. After a while, you're, you'll start breathing deeper because you're just create, you're, you're sort of helping to guide the piranha 
through your entire body into different spots. And by doing that, I was pressurizing between my heart chakra, which is anahata, and uh, between my throat chakra, which is vushuddhi. So by doing that, it allowed this sort of like truth and beauty to come rising up in me. And it was uh, heart expanding to say the least. Um, I got a little, little teary eyed just as you may have heard me cry a little bit here. So yeah, um, this, this practice of Ashtanga, oh, that's right. I was, I was going to go somewhere with the story with the, the sutras teacher and I got a little off track. So with the yoga sutras te- teacher, he said that Ashtanga yoga, which is the eight limb system, has nothing to do with Ashtanga vinyasa yoga. And I, I paused him and I said, excuse me, if I might offer, Ashtanga vinyasa is a structure it's a container through which you can apply the lessons of Ashtanga. It's a little slice of life, just like how your yoga mat's like a little slice of, you know, just a space that's, you know, the sort of demarcation line of like, this is where my practice is taking place. And so the world is like big and vast and sometimes overwhelming And so sometimes for us to practice and get good at things, we need to take a smaller version of it uh, or a modified, simpler version and then build upon it. And then we become proficient and then we start taking our yoga off the mat, so to speak. And I kind (laughs) of, it got a little heated because I, I, you know, he, he, he admittedly said that he doesn't have a lot of experience with the asana. Um, Though again, he's wise, I respect him, all that, but you know, I, I said, for example, ahimsa, like I'm not going to harm myself, my practice. That's why I'm modifying, you know, I'm going to be truthful with my energy reserve, satya. Uh, I'm not going to steal away from future practices <laughs> by pushing myself too much, or at least I try not to, right? I'm brahmacharya. I'm going to, you know, use my energy wisely so that I'm not completely exhausted by the time evening comes. So that's just, that's the first four yamas, but that's just an example of how you can use this beautiful framework that has such an intuitive logic to it to apply Ashtanga yoga in its essence. And when I come to practice thinking that way, everything changes everything changes. That's the way that I teach. That is uh, essentially the way that I was taught, though I'm not sure some of my instructors actually applied that to their own practice, but you know, everyone's on their own journey. So I thought I would share that little tidbit with you. I hope that you're doing well. Um, You know, I miss home, but this is heart expanding. It's reminding me of that person that I have within me that's adventurous, that is fearless, that, you know, takes risks, that is very much into self-discovery, self-exploration, and it's giving me a lot of time to study myself, which is the path of a yogi, right? So um, I will end by saying this. I have one more spot left in Costa Rica. We're leaving in like a month. If you want to come, we have one spot available for you. Reach out to me, Aaron at AaronCoach.com. You can go to ThriveYogaFit.com. I do need to interview you just to make sure everything's good. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, My next coach school is in September, September 16th to the 24th, I believe. And uh, if you're interested in that, again, thriveyogafit.com. You can email me, Erin at Erin Coach. All right. I hope you have a fantastic weekend and namaste. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to support the podcast and if it's helping you, please consider writing a review. You can go to iTunes or Google Play, go into the search bar and type in Thrive Yoga Fit Transformational Coaching, scroll down and you can leave a review. This helps other people to find me as well as bumps us up in the search ratings. Also, this podcast is sponsor free, so that means we don't receive anything for doing it. If you feel so inclined and this podcast is helping to support you and you want to return the favor and help to support any production costs of the podcast, feel free to give a donation to a Venmo link, Thrive Yoga Fit or PayPal, Aaron at AaronCoach.com. If you don't have the means, don't worry about it. We're not going anywhere. You're all good. But if you would like to give back, you can give back in those ways. Thank you so much. Namaste.